Remember when Sandy took a visit to the prison? A psychic medium came to Santa Fe. She had a gift that transcends the physical realm and dared to venture into the bowels of Santa Fe's infamous Old Main Prison. It has been closed for business for many years, but the film industry and the undead remain. There, the medium encountered sights that would chill the bravest of souls. The prison, a place of torment and despair, was a playground for spirits lost and malevolent. In the dank, grimy corridors she saw men, prisoners long since departed, acting peculiarly. They moved like voodoo dolls, their bodies manipulated by unseen forces, climbing the walls and ceilings with an eerie, unnatural agility. But it wasn't just the spirits of men that the psychic encountered. She saw something else, something far more sinister, a formidable entity, a presence that dwarfed any demon in its malevolence. This creature was no ordinary specter. It was a shapeshifter, changing forms at will, and its intelligence was alarmingly apparent. It reveled in the fear that permeated the prison walls, thriving in the terror it incited. This entity was no stranger to the prison. It was an old resident, a constant presence, surrounded by the spirits of the insane men who once walked the prison halls. It was the embodiment of the prison's dark past and the horrors that unfolded within its stone walls. And it was after Sandy. However, there was something else that the psychic saw. A shadow figure, a spectre that seemed to follow her, watching from the corners of her vision. It was a figure that haunted her thoughts and chilled her to the core, yet she remained silent, refusing to acknowledge its presence. When the psychic left the prison that day, her face pale and her eyes haunted. She was more terrified than ever, her usual calm demeanor replaced with a palpable fear. But why? What had she seen? What was it about this shadow figure that filled her with such dread? It's a question that remains unanswered, a mystery that lingers in the air like the chill of a ghost's touch. The psychic left the prison that day, more terrified than ever, but truly frightened for Sandy. But why? What had she seen? Could the shadow figure that Sandy refused to discuss be the cause of her recent troubles? Let's delve into the dark abyss of this mystery. This shadow figure, this entity, it's far worse than any demon the psychic has ever encountered. It's an enigma, shrouded in darkness and fear, and it's intelligent. It can change shape at will, playing on the fears of its victims. Now consider this, Sandy, our medium reveals, is a sensitive. She has a unique ability that makes her attractive to such entities. This can be a blessing, but in this case, it's a curse. This shadow devil she's attracted is not just any spirit. It's dangerous, even deadly. But this entity, this shadow devil, it wasn't always this way. It's a product of its environment, a creature born and nurtured by the horrors that unfolded within the prison walls. It grew to what it is now, due to the horrors that happened in the prison. The prison has a dark history, marked by violence and death. Its cold stone walls echo with the cries of those who met their end within its confines. This place, once a beacon of justice, became a breeding ground for the worst of human nature. In the heart of the 20th century, this prison was the site of one of the most blood-soaked events in American penal history. The year was 1980, a year that would forever be etched in the annals of the prison's dark past. A riot broke out. A riot fueled by years of pent-up anger, frustration and despair. The prison was thrown into chaos. For two days and two nights, the prison was a battlefield. A total of 33 inmates met a brutal end. Their lives snuffed out in the blink of an eye. Some were beaten, others burned alive. One was even decapitated, his head paraded around as a grotesque trophy. But the inmates weren't the only victims. Eleven guards were taken hostage. They were subjected to unspeakable horrors, their dignity stripped away as they were used as pawns in a deadly game of power. This was not just a riot, it was a massacre, a display of the worst possible depths that humanity can sink to. And it is within this darkness, this abyss of despair and violence, that our entity could have been born, grown and thrived. However, this entity was not just a product of the prison's violent history, it was more than that. It was a force, an energy feeding on the fear, the pain and the bloodshed. It was an entity that reveled in chaos and delighted in the suffering of others. And now, 
it seems to have found a new target. A woman named Sandy. A woman who may have the sensitivity to perceive it, to understand it. But why her? Why now? As the bloodshed of the past continues to haunt the present, one question remains. What does this entity want with Sandy? And can she escape its grasp?